Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, we'll be going through the top 15 best GameCube games, so let's get into it. Now, a couple things before we jump into the video. The GameCube is one of my favorite systems of all time, and there are so many great games on the system, it's really hard to include every single one out there. Plus, I haven't played every single GameCube game there is, but I've definitely played a lot of them. But if your game didn't make the list, definitely drop it in the comments below. I may not have played it, and I'm always looking to add more great games to my backlog. Also, this list isn't in any specific order, because these games come from a lot of different genres, and they're all great in their own way. And for some people, they might rank higher than others. Plus, this is just my personal opinion on the top 15 best games, and yours might be totally different. But with that said, let's jump into the list of the top 15 best GameCube games you should play. All right, so the first game on the list is Mario Kart Double Dash. Now, when it comes to the plot of Mario Kart games, there's not a ton to go on. Basically, it's a kart racer and a bunch of different characters from the Mario universe are trying to be the fastest and best kart racer. And so you'll play through various different stages throughout the Mushroom Kingdom and other characters game worlds like Donkey Kong in a race using various different powered up items to be the best kart racer. And so what really made this game unique is the fact that you're driving as two different racers at the same time. So one is driving the car and the other person is using items and helping with drifting and turbo boost of the car. Now another cool thing is that there's a ton of different car types to choose from and each character has their own unique special item they can find in the item boxes on the tracks. Another neat thing is that the different car types have different abilities. So they might be better at accelerating acceleration or have a higher top speed or they might weigh more so if they run into characters it knocks them off course and so you'll need to choose between different characters you want to use to utilize their special items optimizing the cart you're driving for your play style and much more there's a ton of tracks to choose from and a lot of unlockables in this game but one area they really improved on that I think is probably my favorite part of this game is the drifting mechanic and so in other Mario Kart games you could definitely drift but this one really enhanced the feature where you could use that drift and by jiggling the joystick you could actually turn it into a turbo boost giving you an extra boost of speed on the track and so as you really get good at this it can really help accelerate your car past the other racers and it was a whole new skill level to add into the game another cool thing is that there is two kart racers on each car so you could actually play two player both driving the same car which was another cool thing to add into the game overall this is definitely one of my favorite gamecube games and favorite Mario Kart games, even comparing them to current gen systems. So I definitely recommend checking out Mario Kart Double Dash, as it's one of the best games on the GameCube. All right, the next game on the list is Metroid Prime. So I've been a fan of the Metroid series for a long time, playing since the NES, and typically most Metroid games are 2D side-scrolling games. You may have seen the recent Metroid Dread game that came out for Nintendo Switch, and that's typically how most of the games have been. But this game took a giant leap and turned the Metroid series from a 2D action platformer into a first-person shooter exploration game. So the game starts off where you play as Samus Aran, an intergalactic bounty hunter, as she is exploring a new planet, Talon 4, for space pirate activity. And so she's faced off against the space pirates in past Metroid games, and they're one of the biggest threats in the galaxy, and she thought she had really defeated them all, so it was a big deal to have them pop up again on this planet. And so you go to investigate and explore the planet and uncover the mystery of why the space pirates are there, but in doing so, she also discovers some Chozo ruins, which is the alien race which allowed Samus to have a lot of her powers, abilities, and her power suit. So you'll go through the planet in this intense first-person shooter, taking on crazy alien monsters, exploring the planet, and finding different power-ups from the Metroid universe. So you'll explore the planet and map and slowly uncovering new items, new abilities that are classic to the Metroid series like the charge beam, the ice beam, the morph ball, bomb, super missiles, and on and on. And so it was really cool to see that transition of a 2D Metroid game into a 3D first person shooter. I think they did a really great job of that. The only thing that's a little bit difficult these days is going back to the game and trying to use the first person shooter controls on the GameCube. Because at that time they did not have the dual joystick control option like most first person shooters have today. So typically with this control style you'll have to push a button and then use the joystick to control where you're aiming and then using the buttons to shoot from there. So at the time when it was released that was how first person shooters worked so it wasn't really a big deal to get used to but like I said going back from playing modern first person shooters to older ones like this it's a little bit of a learning curve. But the gameplay is awesome. I really hope they make a re-release 
released a remake or remaster something to that effect on the Nintendo Switch but if that doesn't happen it's still worth finding and playing as it's one of the best games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played Metroid Prime yet how do you think it compares to the 2D Metroid games? Love to chat about it more with you in the comments below. Alright so the next game on the list is Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. And so this is a tactical RPG within the Fire Emblem series, which is a long-running series, but this was actually the first one of them to come to North American consoles. And so I was super excited when this game first came out. I first started seeing Fire Emblem characters in Super Smash Brothers, and I didn't really know a whole lot about the series or the gameplay. But one of my favorite games growing up was Final Fantasy Tactics, which was a tactical RPG, and so that's a similar style to what Fire Emblem games are, so I was really excited about checking it out on the game. Cube. And so the story itself, you follow Ike, who is a mercenary and a member of his father's mercenary guild, the Grail Mercenaries, and there's a lot of tension in the kingdoms in which they live right now. So there's kind of been this ongoing tension and war going on between the human kingdoms and the Lagus kingdoms, which are sort of like human-animal hybrids. And so kind of think like minotaurs or giant cat people. And so they can actually transform from this human-animal hybrid form into full-on animal beasts. And so war kind of starts to break out between these kingdoms and all the local seven kingdoms. And so you go on a journey and a quest as these mercenaries to stop the impending war and to restore peace. And where this game really shines is its tactical combat. So like most Fire Emblem games, you'll have a group of soldiers that you'll command of various different class types. So you'll maybe have knights or mages or Pegasus Knights. And it kind of goes on and on what you can choose from, but each one of these will have their own unique equipment style that they can use. So it might be swords or axes or spears or bow and arrows. And it kind of creates this rock, paper, scissor dynamic where certain weapon types are strong against others and weak against others. So it might be like axes are weak against swords or spears are weak against axes. And it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissor mechanic, like I said. And so you'll have to strategize not only between where you put your characters, their movement ability, the weapons they use, the weaknesses your enemies have. And so it gets really tactical and strategic, but it's a whole lot of fun. The game is pretty challenging where it does feature permadeath. So a lot of times you'll be resetting if you want to keep all of your characters around. But at the same time, there's a bunch of characters you'll recruit along the way. Characters can upgrade classes, get enhanced weapons, and level up to become more powerful. And it's super addicting and a lot of fun. The storyline is great, and it's definitely one of my favorite fights. Fire Emblem games and one of the best games on GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played Fire Emblem Path of Radiance yet, how you think it stacks up to the other Fire Emblem games. I'd love to chat with you more in the comments below about it. All right, the next game on the list is Super Smash Bros. Melee. And so this is the second installment of the Super Smash Bros. series. And for many people, this is still their favorite. And so again, there's not really a ton of storyline to this game, but you'll play as a bunch of different classic Nintendo characters as they battle it out to be the last person standing. But this fighting game is pretty unique in the sense that characters don't have life bars, instead they have percentage gauges. And on top of that, each character has their own unique move set, but you'll also find a ton of different items from classic video games that you can use to assist you in battle. And so how it works is your goal is to knock players off of the stage. And so when you start off, people have a 0% gauge, and so when you hit them, they don't really fly very far. However, as players accumulate damage and the percentage goes up throughout the battle, when characters get hit at that point, they'll fly even further off the screen, making them easier to defeat. And so one of the greatest things about this game is the fact that it mashes up a lot of your favorite characters from video games past. So you'll be able to play as characters like Mario, Link, Samus, Pikachu, Captain Falcon, Ness from Earthbound, Star Fox, and it goes on and on. And so not only are you playing as all these different characters from all these game universes, you find items from their universes, you get to play in stages based on their games, and they have the best songs from the games as well. So it's kind of a mashup of all your favorite things in one game in this awesome fighting game. And many players still play competitively today in this version of Super Smash Bros. There's even specialty challenge modes as well. So these can be things like breaking targets with your characters, or hitting a punching bag as far as you can with your character, and much more. There's a ton of unlockables, hidden trophies, characters you can unlock, and much, much more. I definitely spent a ton of hours playing this game growing up, and it's one of my favorite games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below, how do you feel about this game? Do you think it's better than the other Smash Bros games? How would you rank it? 
let me know in the comments below. All right, the next game on the list is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, growing up, arcade beat-em-ups was one of my favorite styles of games, and the Turtles versions of these were always my favorite. In fact, I didn't even know that the genre was called beat-em-ups. I always used to just call them games like Turtles. And so some of my favorites were Turtles 2, the arcade game, Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project, and Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo. And for many years, there was a big drought of good Turtles games. And I kind of thought the genre was dead until this game came out. Now, this isn't a traditional 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up. They took that 2D formula and turn it into a 3D beat em up and I think they did a great job of it. Now the overall story of the game follows the first season of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show that came out around the same time in the early 2000s when this game came out. And so in typical Turtles fashion you're going to face off against hordes of enemies, the Foot Clan, different mutants that Shredder and his henchmen created, crazed mouser robots, and it kind of goes on and on. At the end of stages you'll also face off against bosses from the Turtles universe. Another cool feature with this game is the fact that you can play as each individual turtle, but unlike some of the earlier versions of Turtle Beat'em Ups, each turtle has their own unique play style, where they'll have the different weapons, but they actually function differently. Each turtle kind of has their own unique special ability, and so it's a lot of fun to try and beat this game with each individual turtle to get that different gameplay experience. The game also has a versus mode, so if you wanted to go turtle on turtle, that's another option with the game too. The game also features two-player co-op mode, which is a lot of fun and really brought me back to those original days playing the early Turtles beat-em-up games. But overall, I had a ton of fun with this game, and if you like beat-em-ups, this is a great one to check out, and it's one of my favorite games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played this one, how you felt about it, do you think it's one of the best Turtles games or not? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, so the next game on the list is Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2. Now this game originally came out on the Dreamcast, but was also ported to the GameCube and the Xbox. But this is the version I had the most fun with. And so this is an MMORPG, but unlike typical MMORPGs, you can actually play a lot of this game offline. On top of that, it has a split screen feature where you can play up to four players offline all on the same system. Now the overall story of this game is Pioneer 2, which is a colonization ship, lands on the planet Ragal and tries to settle the planet. But for some mysterious reason there's a huge explosion and all of the colonists disappear and so a band of hunters are hired to investigate and find out what happened to the colonists on Ragal. And so the hunters are this organization of kind of like space mercenaries and so you'll craft your character from scratch of the various different hunter types. So there's more of a warrior type, there's a ranger type that uses long range weapons, there's a magic type and then there's also different races within those classes as well. You could be a human type race, you could be a robot type race, and there's even like an elf type race as well. And so there's a bunch of different combinations, there's different outfits you can use, hairstyles, facial expressions, voices, and the list kind of goes on and on. So you can really customize whatever character you want to dive into this MMO world. And so there's a bunch of different areas you'll go through on the planet. So there's like a forest area, a cave area, an ancient ruin area that you go through. And all of them have their own unique monster types you'll encounter, as well as huge bosses you'll face off against with your characters. And so again, you can play this game offline, you can play it solo, you can play it multiplayer, or if you get the online service, you can play it that way as well to unlock additional items you can find within the game. But again, you don't need to play online, it just had some extra benefits to it. And so I really like that because most MMORPGs, you have to have that online service if you want to experience the game. Where Fantasy Star Online, for GameCube, it was kind of an optional thing where you could still experience almost everything the game had to offer in that offline experience. It's one of my favorite action RPGs on the system, one of my favorite games of all time, and it's definitely one of the best games on the GameCube, and I highly recommend it. But let me know in the comments below if you've played Fantasy Star Online before, if you've played other games in the series, let me know in the comments below. All right, so the next game on the list is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Now for me, when I first saw this game, when it first came out, it was a little bit controversial, more so in the sense because they went with a cartoony, cel-shaded type art style. So one of my favorite games of all time is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, 
time, and that was on the Nintendo 64. And so I, I liked seeing that evolution of Link going from the 2D world into the 3D world, and so I was very excited when I heard there was a new Zelda game coming out for the GameCube, and was really excited to see a more realistic version of Link and a game like that to come out. But again, when I saw that cartoony art style, I was a little bit disappointed, but I was still willing to give this game a chance when it came out. And I was so thankful that I did. The art style took a little bit to get used to, but it added a lot of humor to the game, and there's also some unique gameplay mechanics that were added into the game that really fit right in with that cartoony art style. Now, the general premise of the story is it takes place hundreds of years after the events of the Ocarina of Time, and at this point, the storyline that happened in that game has just kind of become a local legend, where people talk about the hero of time defeating Ganon, or like this ancient evil, and supposedly every time there's a huge evil that comes upon the world, a new hero will rise up to take on that challenge. Well, unfortunately that hasn't really been happening as evil is starting to creep into the land again, but thankfully you're playing as a new reincarnation of Link that's destined to save the world. Now, another really big unique thing about this game is the fact that most of the world has become flooded at this point, and the remaining population basically lives on tiny islands across a vast ocean. And so that's another unique mechanic within the game as you'll be piloting a boat from island to island and exploring these areas throughout the game. Now this Zelda game is still more of a linear type Zelda game which was really the standard prior to Breath of the Wild. So you'll go from dungeon to dungeon and you'll find new items that will help you along your way to complete the dungeons, to take on the bosses, and to help you on your journey. But again, the controls are really tight, the storyline is fun, and the cartoony art style really grows on you once you give it a chance. And I definitely think it's one of the best games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below how you feel about The Wind Waker. How do you think it ranks in your list of Zelda games? Let me know in the comments below. But I definitely think it's one of the best games on the GameCube. Alright, the next game on the list is Tales of Symphonia. And so this is an action RPG and follows the story of Lloyd, who becomes a protector of the Chosen One, who is destined to save a dying world. And so I won't go a ton more into the storyline, because I think that's one of the best part of games in the Tales series, especially Tales of Symphonia. But one thing that I really enjoyed outside of the story of the game was the combat within the game. And so like I said, this is an action RPG, but once you get, enter battles, it becomes almost a fighting style game where you'll assign different special moves to buttons on the controller and you'll battle it out with enemies within a 3D environment. Not only that, you can do this with every single character in your party and you can switch between what character you control as you choose. So it really ups the intensity of the battles where you'll constantly be switching from character to character, casting spells, attacking, moving around enemies, and it's a lot of fun. So the level up mechanic of the game is really fun as well, where not only will you gain experience to use to level up your characters, but your special moves that you have will also become more powerful based on how many times you use them. There's also a title system that will unlock new abilities for your characters as well, based on things that happen in the story, based on how many times you use moves in battle, and a whole lot of other hidden reasons why as well. And so it's super fun to find all these different titles, to unlock these different moves, and really customize your characters specific to your playstyle. Another really cool feature is that you earn rankings after each battle. So depending on how fast you end the battle, how efficient you are, and different things like that, you'll earn more money, more experience that you can use to enhance your characters. And there's another cool feature that when you complete the game, you'll be able to use some of these points that you've earned throughout the entire game to unlock new additional features. And so I definitely played this game multiple times through, and it's one of my favorite action RPGs on the system. And I think it's one of the best GameCube games as well. But let me know in the comments below if you've played Tales of Symphonia before, how do you think it ranks up with the other Tales games? Love to chat about it more in the comments below. All right, the next game on the list is Resident Evil 4. Now, in my opinion, this Resident Evil is one of the best Resident Evil games in the entire series. It really added some amazing elements to the series that hadn't been done before. And one of those was making the game from a top-down, bird's-eye view, tank controls into a third-person shooter. So when they did that, not only did they greatly improve the graphics of the game, it just overall enhanced the playstyle so much. One big thing 
is that you couldn't see all of the zombies coming at you at once. That made it more intense where zombies would sneak up and jump on you from behind or from the sides. And when this happened, you'd have to shake off the zombies by shaking the control stick. So again, that really increased the intensity of the game. I think it made it a lot more fun. It was so much easier to control and really helped immerse you into the experience that much more. Now the storyline follows Leon Kennedy, a survivor from the Raccoon City incident in Resident Evil 2, as he goes on a journey and attempts to find the president's kidnapped daughter. So you end up in this small town somewhere in Europe and the villagers really start to act a little strange and crazy. And so another addition to this game is the fact that the monsters and enemies aren't really zombies per se, but a little bit more sophisticated and intelligent than zombies. So they can communicate with each other, they can use weapons, they can coordinate attacks, and much more, which really, again, added to the intensity of the game instead of just slow-moving zombies coming at you. Another cool element to this game that I love is that they added some RPG elements to the game. So in previous Resident Evil games, you'd find weapons, they'd have ammo, and some weapons would do more damage than others, and that's great, but in this game, they added a store feature where not only could you have your weapons that you'd find, you would buy new weapons, you could buy customized parts for the weapons to upgrade them, you could sell ammunition, you could buy ammunition and you can even find treasures hidden throughout the game that you can sell for more currency and you can use that money to upgrade your weapons even further and so I just really love that element of the game it adds another layer of strategy and on top of that after you beat the game you'll earn points that you can use to buy other items so you could have infinite ammo in some cases new machine guns new outfits and much much more and so there's a lot to this game beyond what you'll experience in your first playthrough but it still holds up one of my favorite Resident Evil games of all time and it's definitely one of the best games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played Resident Evil 4 yet, if you first played it on GameCube, if you've played it on one of the many ports, and how you think it ranks up among other Resident Evil games. Love to chat about it more with you in the comments below. Alright, the next game on the list is Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike. Now if you're not familiar with the Rogue Squadron series, they're typically space battle games where you'll play through various missions that happen within the Star Wars universe. And so this game follows many of the events from the original trilogy, and you'll get to pilot all kinds of different vehicles and ships from the movies as well. So you'll be using things like your X-Wings, your TIE Fighters, your Y-Wings. But another cool addition to this game is that they added in a lot of new ground units that you could pilot as well. So you might be using the ATST walkers, running around on foot, using the speeder bikes, and even riding a Tauntaun from Hoth. And the list kind of goes on and on. And so there's all kinds of cool missions that you'll go through. And the game gets really addicting where there's various different goals on the mission. So it might be taking out so many enemies. It might be destroying so many towers, beating the level in a certain time frame. And it kind of goes on and on of the different things you can do. So that's a lot of fun trying to achieve all those challenges. But there's a lot of different variety in levels as well, which is a lot of fun. Another really cool feature of this game is the fact that they added in almost the entire Rogue Squadron 2 to the game as well. So you can actually go back through and play cooperatively many of the missions from Rogue Squadron 2 in Rogue Squadron 3 as well. It was definitely one of my favorite games on the GameCube and one of the best in the Rogue Squadron series as well. But let me know in the comments below if you've ever played any of the Rogue Squadron games, how you feel this one ranks with the others, let me know in the comments below. All right, the next game on the list is Luigi's Mansion. So this game's story is a little bit funny where Luigi gets a letter saying that he's inherited a mansion and is basically now rich. And so he goes out to check out and explore this mansion only to discover that it was all a big trap and the mansion is actually haunted. And so you'll also quickly discover that Mario has been kidnapped and is trapped within the mansion. And so you go on a quest to save him from this haunted mansion. So throughout this process, you'll encounter a professor that gives you the Poltergust 3000, which is kind of like a ghost sucking vacuum and really reminds me of Ghostbusters, but with a Mario twist. Now, one thing to note is I was a little bit skeptical of this game and I actually didn't even play it until just a few months ago. And I think one of the biggest reasons was that Ghostbusters is my favorite movie of all time. I love the video games. I pretty much love everything that has to do with Ghostbusters. And so I kind of saw Luigi's Mansion as a cheap knockoff of it. And so I think that's why I put off playing it for so long. But I really regret that I did because once I got a chance to play it, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I kind of felt like it was a combination between Mario and Ghostbusters and kind of like a lighthearted Resident Evil in some senses as well. Because as you'll explore the mansion, you'll encounter various ghosts 
but each one of these ghosts has a puzzle element associated with it as well. So sometimes you'll have to use various elements combined with your Poltergust 3000 to capture these ghosts. So you might use a fire element to melt an ice type ghost, or again, maybe you'll use a freezing element to freeze a ghost, or a water element to put out a fire type ghost. And so it's really fun to explore the mansion, solve the puzzles of these ghosts, try and catch all of them, and there's even big boss fight ghosts as well as you explore the mansion. The game even has multiple endings depending on how much treasure you collect throughout the mansion during your playthrough. But overall I had a lot of fun with it and I think it's one of the best games on the GameCube and I definitely recommend it. Alright, the next game on the list is Resident Evil Zero. Now they actually ported a lot of games and did several remasters of different Resident Evil games on the GameCube. But outside of Resident Evil 4, this one was really the only unique concept. And so this game is actually a prequel to the first Resident Evil game. And so in this game you play as Rebecca Chambers who is a Rookie Stars member that starts out investigating some brutal murders that are happening outside of Raccoon City. And during this exploration she'll meet Billy Cohen who is an ex-Marine and current fugitive and they'll team up to uncover the mystery of these brutal murders and the new zombie threat outside of Raccoon City. And so the storyline is really cool to experience as you'll uncover some of the backstory leading up to the first Resident Evil game. But another really cool feature is the fact that you can switch between these two characters as you play through the game. And so in doing so you'll be able to use different weapons that each character is using. You'll be able to solve different puzzle elements where sometimes you might boost one character up to a new level and they'll be exploring solo or maybe you'll have to open doors as one character to help the other character progress and so it was a lot of fun and I think it was executed very well in this game. On top of that you'll take on some cool new bioweapons like these creepy leeches that are huge and actually turn people into zombies at the same time. You'll take on giant scorpions and much much more. I think they did a great job on this game and I definitely recommend checking it out if you're a survival horror fan or if you like the Resident Evil series. But let me know in the comments below if you've played this one yet as I think it's one of the best games on the GameCube. Alright the next game on the list is Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Now this is another game that was originally on the Dreamcast but was ported to the GameCube and it's actually a 3D Sonic game. Now for most people when you hear 3D Sonic game you wouldn't think that it's a good game but I think Sonic Adventure 2 actually did a great job and was still one of my favorite games on the GameCube. It was my first experience playing a 3D Sonic game and there's still a lot to like about it even if you don't particularly enjoy 3D Sonic games. So one thing that definitely stands out as I play through this game is the amazing soundtrack. I think that's one of the things that helps keep you engaged with the game because it is so good. Now the storyline within the game actually has two different branches. So there's a hero mode and a dark mode. And so in the hero mode you'll play as Sonic and friends like Tails and Knuckles and their storyline really revolves around getting the Chaos Emeralds to prevent Dr. Eggman and Shadow from taking over the world. And then the dark storyline focuses around Shadow, kind of an evil version of Sonic, and Dr. Eggman as they try and capture the Chaos Emeralds to take over the world. And so it's kind of cool as you get to play from both good and evil's perspective throughout this game. And there's also different types of gameplay mechanics at work in the game as well. So you've got your traditional Sonic and Shadow levels, which are fast-paced 3D Sonic levels, where again, you gotta go fast and get through these levels. But then there's also levels featuring Knuckles and another dark character that revolve around finding parts of the Master Emerald. And so you'll be to fly around the different stages and collecting these emerald pieces and there's also Tails and Dr. Eggman or Robotnik levels where you're basically controlling a giant mech and shooting all kinds of enemies as you go through the stage. Another really fun element to this game is the Chow Garden and so these are little Pokemon-esque characters that you'll collect and find throughout the game but you can also breed them, level them up, feed them, and enhance all kinds of different abilities for these various Chows. And then with that, you can use them to race against each other and battle it out in karate matches. And so again, it kind of felt like Chocobo Racing from Final Fantasy VII meets Pokemon breeding and Pokemon battles. So it's just another fun, addictive element within this game as well. And I think it's one of the best games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played this game before. Do you like it or not? Because it is that 3D Sonic game which just has that negative stigma. Let me know in the comments below. Alright, the next game on the list is Soul Calibur 2. Now this is a 3D fighting game that 
that centers around the story of the Soul Edge Blade. And so this was an evil sword that was destroyed within the first Soul Calibur game. But now the various combatants are back again trying to collect the pieces of the Soul Edge to either restore the blade and destroy it once and for all, or to use its evil power to reach their goals. So like most fighting games, the storyline isn't necessarily the focus of the game, but more the gameplay style and the fighting mechanics. And so what's unique about the Soul Calibur games is the fact that each character not only has their own unique fighting style, but they also have a variety of weapons they can use throughout the game. So not only is it there your typical arcade mode style gameplay within the game, there's also a weapons master mode, which is really cool. So this adds some RPG elements to the game, where you'll take on the role of various fighters, and you'll go through a journey, collecting different weapons, gaining experience and gold, taking on different challenges, and these are a lot of fun too. So you might be faced with certain handicaps in the battle, you might fight characters that are invisible, and various different things like that. And so like I said, as you go through the this mode you'll gain experience you'll find new weapons and items which is just a ton of fun and super addicting to go through and unlock all these with each character now another really cool element to this game is that depending on what system you bought the game for, you'd get an additional bonus character. So on one system, for example, you got Spawn. Another system, you got a Tekken character to my understanding. But on the GameCube version, you actually got Link from Legend of Zelda. So this was a really cool element to the game that was added exclusively for the GameCube version. And I think they did such a great job of it, which is why it holds up as one of my favorite games on the GameCube. Because again, Link is known for having all kinds of different items and weapons that he uses throughout the games, and you'll actually be able to use them in this 3D fighting game as well. So you'll find various swords from the Zelda series you can use in the game, you'll have different items like your boomerang and your bond that you can use, and much more. And so not only is it a super fun fighting game, it has that added bonus on the GameCube of getting to play as Link from The Legend of Zelda, which definitely makes it one of my favorite fighting games of all time and one of the best games on GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played any of the Soul Calibur games before. If you've played Soul Calibur 2, what version did you get? Did you get the GameCube one or one of the other systems? Let me know in the comments below. All right guys, so the last game on the list is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. So this is a fun RPG that takes place in the Mario universe and centers around the story of Princess Peach as she gives Mario a treasure map that's supposed to lead him to the thousand year door and the treasure within. But quickly on your journey, Princess Peach is kidnapped and not only are you seeking out the treasure of the thousand year door, you're now on an adventure to save Princess Peach as well. And so this is a quirky, fun RPG that also has some cool action and puzzle mechanics within the game as well. And so it takes full advantage of the idea of Paper Mario, and you'll gain various abilities throughout the game utilizing your paper abilities. So at one point, for example, you can turn into a paper airplane that can help you achieve further and farther jumps and reach hidden areas by turning into a paper airplane. And there's other quirky abilities like that as well that you'll unlock. Now another really fun aspect of the game is that you'll get various sidekicks as you play, but there's also a timed attack feature within the turn-based battles as well. So each of your moves, be it using your hammer, be it jumping, or your sidekick abilities, all have a timed attack ability associated with it. One thing that I really liked about these timed attack abilities within the game is that they were in line with what you were actually doing. So for example, if you're hitting someone with your hammer, you would actually hold the joystick back for a certain amount of time, like you're holding the hammer back, and then you'd slam it on the enemy. Or if you're jumping on the enemy, you'd have to time a push of the A button at the right time to keep jumping and do multiple attacks. And so there's a lot of cool things like that that I think fit very well with the game. Another neat aspect of the battle system is that all of the battles take place on a stage in a theater type setting. So it's almost like your characters are acting out a play and there's an audience that gets involved with the combat as well. So depending on what you're doing, if you do really well, the audience will cheer more for you and that gives you benefits versus if you're performing poorly, they might get upset and negatively impact what's going on. But I think if you like turn-based RPGs with a twist and a fun sense of humor, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is definitely worth picking up and playing, and I think it's one of the best games on the GameCube. But let me know in the comments below if you've played this one, how you think it stacks up with the rest of the Paper Mario series. I'd love to chat about it with you more in the comments below. Well again guys, that wraps up my list of the top 15 best GameCube games. If you guys like this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And again, if you agree with this list, if there's games I missed, if there's games you think should be on this list, let me know in the comments below. 
But if you guys haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us support the channel, pick up content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into the live streams and let's plays we do on the channel, you can follow us over on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.